Welcome to the 10 Minutes Film School of the Film Provocation. My name is Nelson Sorano. I'm the actor, producer, and writer of this film. Uh, first of all, I'm not trained to be Robert Rodriguez, even though I admire his work and I consider an inspiration for all new filmmakers. What you're about to see is how to make a film with only $15,000. All right, so let's watch it. I tried to shoot this film here in LA, but just the pre-production costs were just too high. To give you an example, I did a teaser with animated photos and the editor charged me $400 for two minutes of editing. So I just decided to film in a place where all my costs were the lowest. I'm from Bolivia and there you can have a good lunch with only $3. So if you are from a small town, that will be a good place to shoot your next film. The most important of a film is the idea that you want to tell. To be honest with you, I did my first draft not caring about how expensive my movie could be. However, when I decided that I have to shoot in Bolivia, I did an important adaptation. To give you an example, in the original script, I had a car chase scene in a highway. That just that scene probably will cost me like $20,000, if not more. How I resolve this I ask myself, what is the intention of this scene? What I want to show in this scene is that the main character, Nick, is a hero and he's saving his wife. But he's not a Superman hero. He's a normal guy who under dramatic circumstances could do heroic actions. In both cases, the car chase or Nick saving his wife by taking her out from his burning house, the intention is the same. My main character is a hero, however, knowing the place where I was going to be shooting could save me a lot of writing time. I did a research and I determined that comedies, action and horror movies are the most watched by the audience. Knowing your audience is going to help you to have your investment back. That's why I decided to write an action movie. That's another reason why I decided to shoot this movie in Bolivia. My father is the well-known actor Elias Serrano. That means he knows a lot of people with money. That doesn't mean he could get the money easily, but that helps a lot when it's time to ask for locations, favors, permits, and why not getting the money from sponsors. There are many ways to do finance a film, such as loans, sponsors, international co-productions, etc. Some of the company's owners may be interested in supporting you by exchanging. This means they are going to offer you products instead of money. What you can do with these products, makeup, food or tapes, is to sell them or to use them. My mom has two houses, so I use both of them to be the house of the main character that has more appearance in the film. In addition, your relatives, crew members or friends can give you a hand finding locations, cars, etc. In order to make your dream come true, you have to be really creative in order to replace a castle for a nice house of your parents. Remember, the most important thing is the intention of what you are trying to say. If you can replace and keep the same structure of your script, go for the easiest to get. Let's check out the two of the most difficult scenes to shoot in this movie. The scene, Nick's burning house. Well, the first thing to start a scene is to have the location. Getting a house that is gonna be burned sounds like a mission impossible. It's hard, but not impossible. This house was the operation center of the crew. So if you are not that lucky as I, you can find all houses that are gonna be in demolition soon. Having the fire department and specialists is more than mandatory. I was lucky again that the fire department helped me at no cost with the firefighters, paramedics, and an ambulance. Again, that's the advantage of shooting in a small country. If you're not that lucky like me, think about going to small towns or Mexican cities like Tijuana or other border towns. Getting some extras in your movie makes it look more expensive too. Find people on the streets or friends that are so eager to show up in a movie is not that complicated. Having 
a good technician in special effects is very important. Let's watch the scene. After Jennifer spread out the gasoline around Amanda and then over Nick's house, she started the fire. That's when the special effects technician starts his work. Most of the fire that you see in this scene is made on post-production. That means made off the computer. But let's go back to the scene. After Jennifer starts the fire, this particular fire is made on the computer just to protect the actress for possible burning wounds. When Jennifer walks out of Nick's house, there is a window next to the main door. In this window, I have three persons. One person is holding a fan. The other is the special effect technician holding a torch connected with the hose to a carafe aiming at the outside window. And the last guy is holding a hose ready to spread out water just in case. In the next sequence, when I'm running to open the door of my burning house, seeing the smoke actually is not that much in the actual shoot, but we made it better with the help of computer special effects. The same way when Nix is carrying Amanda getting out of the house. The other sequence is when Nick runs over a hallway inside of his burning house and a burning beam falls down after Nick comes closer to Amanda. In this scene, I also have three people. One guy is on the top of the ladder holding the beam. The other one is the technician who spread out the gasoline and starts the fire. And the last guy is holding the hose for any inconvenience. As soon as I pass over the burning beam, the guy on the ladder makes the beam fall down. In these particular dangerous scenes, it's mandatory to have lots of water and soy milk. Both of them prevent dehydration. Also, it's important to have first aid box with burn ointment. The scene of the nightclub. To get this location, I brought my folder with all the newspapers, articles about my movie and I start talking with the manager of the nightclub about what famous actors are in it. You may think getting famous actors is too complicated. You are so wrong. Only the 10% of all actors in the US are considered working paid actors. The other 90% are actors that have part-time jobs at the same time that they go to auditions and other work doing background for films. Special effects help a lot to make your film look more expensive. Analyzing all the action scene, there is a combination of many factors such as actors, crew, and special effects during the shoot and after post-production. We do not even use fancy props, we only use two real guns, one of my father and the other one from my mother. The rest were only toy guns that look like real guns. Music is the key to have a successful film. It's amazing the power of music. I heard a guy who charged me $1,600 for the whole music of my film. He's a professional musician, but the guy is 60s. He plays jazz. An action movie needs someone good playing like rock, electronic music, or some violent rhythms. So to fix the problem, I decided to compose the music myself. I'm not a composer, but I know what it sounds good and what doesn't. My sound editor helped me a lot by fixing all the music that didn't work. Getting talented people is really, really important to the success of your film. As I said before in the case of my sound editor, you have to find creative people that can solve your problems and not give you more headaches. Where did I find my people? At universities, there are a lot of people who have somehow experience. So you hired the ones that you think look more responsible and hard workers. When you are not a professional writer, you have to find someone who can guide your work. And that's what I did. I was lucky that I had a friend who was a producer who convinced me to do the producer job. I'm really thank you for this man, Eddie Alvarado. He recommended me a good place where you can receive the help that you need. This place is called Casa 0101. You can find it online. The general budget of provocation. Another good way to save money in case you don't have film equipment is to sell part of the distribution rights to someone who has the camera, sound equipment, etc. You have to do the math and calculate for how much you can sell your rights. Okay, 
Here are the details of my budget, and remember that I shoot in Bolivia.